Well, hello there, and this is Auntie, and I am here to do my review of a new show on Discovery Plus called Too Large. Season one, episode one, we big, but we are pretty. Everybody needs a sweet old auntie. Everybody needs. With a woop woop and a boop boop. Auntie Benbow. You can make this up. Now you know that these are some crazy motherfuckers. So why? Even the sweet old Auntie Benbow. Auntie Benbow. Are you okay? Are you okay? Well, hello everybody, and this is Auntie. If this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and to all of my new subscribers thank you all so much for joining the family to all of my nieces and nephews who have been here with me for the long haul thank you all so much for your continued support thanks to mary grace number five y'all i am bringing you all a new series on discovery plus called too large <laughs> It appears to be a different spin off of um, my 600 pound life. If you all remember Dr. Proctor, okay, is one of the weight loss doctors who uh, first had his appearance on Dr. Now. He was a, um, let me bring up his picture. Hold on, let me put my glasses on and bring up his picture okay now if you all remember dr proctor dr proctor is was first so seen on not um on my 600 pound life when he was trying to help one of the the couples right one of the people trying to um lose weight and one of those persons was tammy um um no it was somebody else i gotta remember but y'all remember anyway dr proctor um was attempting to help one of a dr now's patients who was unable to make it out to dr now's and so he sent her to dr proctor's office and she still was unable to get the weight off as we all know dr proctor has also shown up dr charles proctor has also shown up on um my 1000 pound sisters okay um he is now having his own spin-off show called too large where he is going to be helping seven he's going to be helping seven um different people try to lose weight so this is a new spinoff show on discovery plus and don't forget that i purchased discovery plus so that you don't have to y'all let me tell you this show was funny it was sad it was all that okay because these two friends are attempting to lose weight um and you know we're going to go ahead on and get into this story so of course um um we have megan and vanessa um megan is the one in the gray shirt and vanessa is the one in the burgundy shirt these are two friends who grew up together in um, um middle school and elementary school together Megan, um, um, we are first introduced to her because Megan starts off the show. She gets out of bed, y'all, and she is laying already on top of a whole bunch of pee pads. 
She gets out of out of the bed and because she is so heavy, she has pee pads up underneath <laughs> her feet because she said as soon as she gets out of the bed, she has to pee. And so, of course, she stands there in her pajamas and everything else and begins and proceeds to pee on the pee pads. She has an oxygen mask on her face. She is, you know, obese, of course, you know, we know that this is just how it goes, right? And so it's just disgusting to see Megan um, get out of bed and just straight up pee. So, you know, she yells out to her husband. I didn't see her wash her cootie cat, dry her cootie cat. I didn't see her do anything at that point. And he comes into the room because she has an oxygen mask on and she has a 50 foot um um she has a 50 foot tube because she is on oxygen and so she gets stuck on it she's calling her husband he comes in he gives her a kiss he picks up the pee pad he didn't take the pissy shorts off of her or the pissy drawers or whatever she had on. He didn't take any of that off of her. He just picked it up and kissed her and he went on and, you know, to unhook her. She is breathing just like, oh my God, sound like a wind tunnel. She said that she could barely get around in the house. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this, <laughs> this is so kind of freaking nasty. And so, you know, she talks about, you know, not being able to get around um, because of um, her weight. And she realizes now that she has to do something. But she wants her best friend, Vanessa, to join in with her on this weight loss journey that she is about to embark on. So when we, you know, we talk to Megan and we really meet Megan, right? Megan, of course, this is Megan. She is sitting here with her mask on and she is talking about, you know, her childhood and the things that she's gone through in her childhood. Um, her mother is still alive. She has a very, oh, here we are, close relationship with her mother. But she just wants to lose weight. She, you know, she realizes that she's not living the best life that she could be living. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so, you know, she just wants to get this weight off her. She has a boyfriend. I believe his name was Terry. And, you know, he's in love with her. I guess he's her little living boyfriend and everything. She wants to be able to walk on the beach and to do all of that kind of stuff. And so, of course, you know, she, you know, has gotten in contact with Dr. Proctor. She has a couple of days before she is going to have her first visit with him. She's unaware about how much she weighs, of course. And so, you know, she's like, I, I, I've got to do this. And so they don't really do like 600 pound life where they showing them eating and all of that kind of stuff. Or at least they did not really show her. They just kind of show like her, her, her life with her boyfriend. But the girlfriend, Vanessa, is a whole different story. Now, Vanessa is one of those crying and weeping type of woman, women. And, you know, she just got a whole bunch of stuff that's going on with her. I mean, girlfriend, can you look at girlfriend? Girlfriend says that she is, um, looks like Beyonce. She's just white. She said, I look like Beyonce, but I'm just white. <laughs> girl, girl, stop that foolishness. This woman don't look nothing like Beyonce. She talks about, you know, how, um, you know, Megan was there for her when it was coming through middle school that, you know, the girls used to tease her and all of that kind of stuff. And how, you know, she, you know, Megan was like, you know, stepping up to the girls and all that kind of stuff on her behalf. And so, you know, she was just like, you know, this is my ride or die chick. And, you know, she's excited about Megan doing the weight loss surgery, but she's not excited about it herself. You know, she talks about, you know, living in the car with her mother and all that kind of stuff. She currently has some children, um, some sons who are, oh my God, excuse me, y'all, who are large and in charge themselves. She is basically in poverty 
and basically eating out of food shelters or of food pantries. And so, you know, it, it, so Megan, you know, looks beyond all of that kind of stuff because this is her friend. And so she says that, you know, she wants to have lunch with her. So the two of them go out to lunch. Of course, Megan has to be pushed around by her husband. I mean, walked around by her husband because she can't go too many places and everything. But she tells her husband to bring this stool with him, her. Now, this stool goes with girlfriend everywhere, right? She takes this cotton freaking stool to and fro and everywhere she goes because they're going to go to a restaurant. So they go to the restaurant. You know, they made a reservation and everything. She said, can I bring my stool in? I don't trust no other chairs to hold me up. So they was like, oh, guys. Okay. So, you know, she brings her stool in there. She sits there or well, flops down onto her stool and they're waiting for, you know, Vanessa to come in. And so Vanessa comes in and everything. And, you know, she hugs her and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, they sit down and she starts telling her, you know, how happy she is and all this kind of stuff. And Megan said, I'm happy, but I'm not happy. I'm ready to lose weight and I want to change my life. And I want you to do the same thing with me, Vanessa. And Vanessa was like, oh, hell no i like food you know i ain't trying to um cotton freaking go on no uh, no bariatric diet I'm, I'm bariatric surgery i don't want to do any of that kind of stuff yeah i want to live but damn it i want to live eating and so you know megan is like you know please you know we do everything together let's do this together you know knickknack patty right give a egg on dog a bone and so you know the two of them you know um subtle in this conversation where they start talking about their middle school and high school days and how they you know they're big but they pretty and all this kind of stuff they know how to drop it like it's hot somebody know how to hang off the bed and go ahead on to get her man and all that kind of stuff they're just having like regular old little girl talk except for you know they're just really big now neither one of them are, are aware like i said of how much they weigh so megan you know makes a decision that she's going to go and see dr proctor and she stops by you know her um, um, um girlfriend's house and everything and you know they have a little chit chat and all that kind of stuff. And she's telling her, you know, she's hoping that she's going to be okay. So her and her husband go to, you know, Dr. Proctor's office. And of course they got a way in. Now, you know, on Dr. Now we say back that thing up, but on this one, the way that they weigh, they got to pull up to the bumper, baby. Let's see how much you weigh. Ooh, pull up to the scale, baby. Let's see how much you weigh. Jiggy, 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 jiggy. So she pulls up, Megan pulls up to the scale and everything. And when she gets on, on the scale, she's 498 pounds. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Megan does not look like she is, you know, one of them little slim chicks. Like, I mean, little tall chicks. She's like a, 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 a really short chick. So I can imagine what her damn BMI is, right? And so she gets on in. She's devastated. She can't believe that this is how much she weighs. She has a con, you know, Dr. Proctor comes in and tells her, you know, look, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. So basically, you know, she says she has fibromyalgia. She's diabetic. She has high blood pressure. She has arthritis, rheumatoid, um, and, and all kinds of, of, of arthritis in her. So she knows that she's got to get, you know, get this weight off of her and so he gives her a goal um at 498 pounds of losing 20 pounds she tells dr proctor you know what dr proctor i'm gonna do better i'm gonna lose more than what you what you think and he said oh she said i'm gonna make you say go girl you did that girl whoop girl you know bam girl and he was like okay if you lose more than what you know i i, I said i asked you all, i will say that so she goes home and she starts cutting back on her food and everything. And in the meantime, and in between time, she's still having a conversation with Vanessa. So she's talking to, you know, Vanessa about her weight loss. And Vanessa is making every excuse in the world as to why she can't do this. Vanessa, again, you know, says that, you know, she's living in poverty. She has a U-Haul truck that I don't know whether she rents that bitch or whether or not she owns it but she has a youth call truck and she rides around to all of the neighbors houses picking up old beat up laundry um, um washing machines refrigerator so that she can take it to the junkyard the scrap metal yard and she can get money for it right and so she just rides around you know doing it that i don't know why this chick don't have 
no cotton freaking job. I don't know what any of that is about, but she rides around. Okay, let me bring her picture back up because I don't want y'all to attribute that to, um, let me just bring both of them up. So my my girl right here rides around to people's houses, like I said, picking up all kinds of scrap metal so she could take it to the dumpster. And, you know, when she take it to the dumpster and everything, you know, they buy it off of her. And so, you know, she, she, she and so, of course, Megan over here is telling her, you know, uh, you're making excuses for not wanting to get this weight off. I mean, this woman got so many cotton freaking excuses as to why she doesn't want to do this surgery. But basically, at the end of the day, she loves food. She said that her mother comforted her with food. When she fell down and cried, she gave her food. When she was happy, her mother gave her food. So just she just eat food just all the time. And this is something that's a comfort to her. And she has done the same thing with her sons because her sons are heavy and large and young. So she goes to the scrapyard and everything. She has a couple of uh, washing machines. They pull the stuff out, out of the truck. They give her $57 for the scrap metal that she has. And right before she leaves, she thinks, aha, I don't know how much I weigh. So she asks the young black guy, you know, can you, do y'all have a scale here? He said, yeah, we got a scale. She said, well, can I get up on the scale? I need to find out how much I weigh. So the dude was like, all right, I'm going to have to go in here and turn the joint on for you, right? <laughs> he said, I'm going to have to turn the joint on for you. So I'm going to see your weight. You going to be all right with that? She was like, yeah, I'm going to be all right with that. So, you know, she walks up on the scale and everything. Her son gets out the van. He's looking. So she gets on the scale and she's walking. She was like, dang, I don't know how much I weigh. So, you know, little youngin, he, you know, he in the booth, you no, know, do making it do what it do turning the scale on. So he comes out with a little scrap of paper and he was like, you want the truth? <laughs> She's like, I like to wait. He said, do you want the truth or no? And so she was like, yeah, I want the truth. So she was 440 pounds. Immediately she begins to cry because she did not know, you know, how much she weighed or anything like that, you know, and, and that she's just shocked that she weighs that much because she said the last time that she had weighed herself, she was 327 pounds. Even with that, I would have been boohooing and crying, right? And so anyway, she <clears throat> she leaves and she's with her son. She gets in the U-Haul truck and they're driving away. And she said, you know, I really got to get this weight off of me and all of this. And then and, 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 and at the meantime, in the between time, she was like, we got some money, boo. We're going to go head on. Thank you so much for the super chat. And so she was like, you know, we're going to go ahead on and get us something to eat. She pulls up at this cotton freaking place. It looked like one of them little trucks. I don't know what kind of restaurant it was. And they pulled up at that joint. And she was like, let me get. Mm. Now, this is after she just weighed herself and found out that she weighs 440 pounds. She got $57 from the junkyard for the scrap metal that she had. She rides up to the thing. She said, let me get um, four of your sandwiches. He was like, all right. She was like, 60 wings? 60 wings? Sixty wings. Sixty. Not six. Not sixteen. Sixty wings. Four, I think, order of French fries, macaroni and cheese. She spent every dime of that $57 on food that she got from a scrap metal. And then the rest of the week, she's eating from the food pantry. So Megan called her on the phone because she had been ducking her and everything. And Megan was like, you know, what's going on? I need to find out what's going on. And she was like, girl, I just, you know, I can't do this. Whatever. You know, I'm happy for you. You know, you go ahead and do it with the whoop, whoop, whoop. So it's Megan's day of surgery. And Megan decides that she's going to stop by Vanessa's house and, you know, have a conversation with um, Vanessa at this time. At this time, it's the pandemic, and so they, you know, have to sit outside with their mask and everything on. And, you know, she begins to tell her that she's just not ready to do 
anything like this and she's happy for megan but megan stop pressing her out damn it she's not gonna do the program and so you know megan was like all right well i'm gonna go to surgery and so of course you know vanessa was like you know maybe you might die on the table or whatever and megan was like this is the risk that i'm gonna have to take because if i'm gonna die on the table i'm gonna die not being on the table right because her weight was out of freaking control and so she goes you know to surgery and uh, i mean she goes back to doctor um i skipped she goes back to dr proctor's office and you know dr proctor asked her about it and she was like you know it's been challenging i'm hoping that i've lost enough weight so they was like all right then well let's go ahead on the way you pull up to the scale baby let's see how much you weigh mm -hmm. hey pull up to the scale baby let's see how much you weigh uh -huh. So she gets on the scale and she is down to 448, I mean, 458 pounds. She's lost a total of 40 pounds. Now, mind you, Dr. Proctor had only given her a 20, 20 pound weight loss um, challenge and she met that and doubled that. And so he was like, you know what? Next week you're going under the knife. So now this is when she's over there at Vanessa's house saying her final goodbyes to Vanessa and everything. She had an opportunity to only pick one person to go into the hospital with her and she decided to choose her mother. Vanessa's motivation for, I mean, Megan's motivation for doing this surgery is because she had just recently lost her father and she had promised her father on his deathbed right before he died that she would take care of herself and that she would get the weight off so she has you know um, um a, a deeper um motivation or reason if you will for wanting to get this weight off this was something that she promised her father that she would do and so you know she you know when she goes into surgery and everything they do the surgery on i'll never watch that like i fast forward through that part <laughs> And so, you know, she gets the surgery and she comes out just fine. You know, she goes home and now it is time for, you know, the biggest challenge, right? Because after they get the weight loss surgery, like this is the biggest challenge that they're going to have to go through is trying to get this weight off of their bodies. So anyway, she goes, you know, back home and everything and she starts to lose weight she's still trying to encourage vanessa by eating different foods and stuff like that vanessa indicated that when she goes to the food pantry that it'd be a whole lot of potato chips and stuff like that you know snacky snacky type of food in there for her children but nothing in there for her and so you know um um um, our girl Megan was like, come on over to the house. Now we see Megan moving around and everything. And she's, you know, just, you know, getting better. She's losing weight. She has her compression socks and stuff like that on um, after surgery because she has to make sure that she doesn't clot. And her husband or her boyfriend is, you know, very accommodating to her and he's helping and all of that kind of stuff. And so, you know, um, 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 Vanessa picks up some food from the um food pantry and she brings it over it has cheese puffs in it potato chips all kinds of snacky snackies as vanessa said but it also has some turkey meat in there for her it, they had some um carrots and so you know megan begins to tell her you know what she should have how what she should not have how she got to eat different things and so megan i mean vanessa behind her back get to talking about her and was like she get on my damn nerve because she thinks she know <laughs> She said the bitch thinks she know everything. And I'm sick of her thinking that she know everything, right? <laughs> She's trying to tell me how the hell to eat, you know. But basically what she said is you got a man, you doing better than me. So how can you look down on me? So, of course, you know, uh, Megan is like, well, come on, let's go in the kitchen and let's cook. Now, mind you, Megan could not even get up and scramble an egg, according to her. But now she's in there, you know, doing what she do with the woo woo and the boo boo boo. And so, you know, Vanessa's like, if you don't put no salt up on that mofo, I ain't going to eat it. And so she's like, I'm not going to put salt on it. I don't put salt on my food anymore. So, of course, you know, she does, you know, the rice that came in there. 
um she did some turkey meat and you know they was talking about the carrots and stuff it was a can of carrots and some barbecue but vanessa was like we can have barbecue because it ain't number 70 um <laughs> 70 calories and she was like but it, it got 18 carbs in it okay you ain't supposed to have but like what 30 carbs a day so anyway you know she's trying to teach her this but you know of course vanessa is not you know up for this but vanessa agrees to go to see dr proctor so she goes to brock dr proctor's office and she does her little weigh-in and all of that kind of stuff because she went with megan after megan went in to go and get her little checkup and so you know she went with her and she was talking to dr proctor and all of that and she was you know basically telling dr proctor that you know she really knows that she needs to do something about this but she's just really not sure about what she wants to do about this she don't know whether or not she want to lose you know weight or not she knows she needs to and so he was like well how much do you weigh so of course she got to pull up to the bumper so she pulls up to the bumper she gets on the scale she's 400 and 40 she was 444 pounds i think it was 446 pounds and so you know he was telling her you know you really got to think about doing this and you know the risk factors and all of that kind of stuff and so you know vanessa agrees that this is something that she is going to try to do but we all know that vanessa ain't serious vanessa got another box you know we see vanessa with another box from the food pantry right and she talking about, you know, the food that's in the food pantry. She took it, was out there grilling with her sums, making some hot dogs and stuff like that. And she had the hot dogs up in some lettuce, thinking that she was doing something. But she was eating everything because we saw her pulling up at McDonald's. They were sneak attacking her ass. They, <laughs> they were sneak attacking her ass. They had her going like you know they was following her all up in the burger burger king line and some more stuff but vanessa was like i don't give a damn i'm hungry and i'm gonna eat okay and so you know of course every time you turn around vanessa is crying about something she's a big old cry baby i can't do this i can't do this anyway make a long story short megan ended up losing 180 pounds and vanessa was going back and forth every time she went to dr proctor's office she was gaining more weight so when she went to dr proctor's the, um, um the, the the second time when she got up on the scale at um, um megan's house she was supposed to go to dr proctor and that's when she found out that she was too big so instead of her driving all the way out to dr proctor's office she said i'm gonna call him on the mofo phone <laughs> <laughs> so she calls dr proctor on the phone and dr proctor unlike doctor now is not sitting up on the screen he is sitting in his little chair and everything he bought this far back from it. he was like so yeah what's going on vanessa now one thing about dr proctor is he doesn't play either dr proctor indicated that his father used to be a weight loss surgeon and he used to watch how people would transform themselves by losing weight and stuff like that and he was interested in doing that because he said it was such a rush to see and be a part of that and so this is the same practice that he decided that he wanted to get into because he wants to see people transform and live a better life and and all that kind of stuff and so that is what's motivating him so when he talks to vanessa when she finally comes to the show i mean to the shop Vanessa now is weighing 448 pounds. So every time Vanessa went back and every time Vanessa weighed, she was weighing, gaining more weight. And Dr. Proctor was like, you know, you it's almost like you're afraid of losing weight. You know, you have a shield up that you're protecting yourself with this food and she was like right you're right and he was like but you know you got to do this she kept saying that she had said in the um uh, in the last meeting with dr proctor that she um wasn't really taking it seriously she didn't take what the nutritionist says seriously she didn't take what anybody says seriously but now she realizes that she has to be serious about this and i think the thing that motivated her to change her mind about this whole situation was the fact that dr proctor was not giving up on her it was her she was expecting him to but he didn't he said you know what i got you boo i got you so anyway they show they have a um a session at the end when uh, um, um megan has lost the weight and so megan has gathered gathered her mother and some friends her husband or fiance or boyfriend and they're all looking 
for the big reveal. Now, let me tell y'all something. This mofo is very funny because they have them twerking, honey. They are letting all their fat hang out. They lifting their shirts up. They just letting you see all the ooey and the gooey of it all. Like I'm telling you, they are just spread, spread it out. So just, just enormous, just fat, just all over the place. And they're not ashamed of it. They said we big, but we are pretty, honey. We are pretty and we normal people. Girlfriend said that when Vanessa said when she gets out of the bed in the morning after she pee in her portable toilet that's sitting by her bed. This is what I don't understand. Who's dumping that? Who's dumping the pee that Vanessa pees into at the side of her bed? Vanessa's toilet, her portable toilet, okay, that got handles up on that mofo. It's so tall that she ain't even got to, her knees ain't even bent on the toilet, basically. She gets up in the morning. The other one, okay, Megan was peeing on pee pads. And this chick is peeing in a portable pot beside her bed. Then she gets on the bed, rears backwards, lift up her stomachs, get her daggone talcum powder or whatever kind of powder, baby powder, puppy powder, bitch, adult powder. She got powder. And she's just taking the powder and just slamming the powder up underneath the bottom of her stomach. And she said that they need to create some diapers. She said that they, <laughs> the producer asked them, do they wear diapers? Because they was talking about how much they pee on themselves. And they said, that, and Megan said, we need to create some cloth diapers for people like us. And they need to create some type of strip of cloth or paper or something that goes up under your big girl stomach and it keeps your skin from getting chafed down in. But I'm saying, who's, the, who's emptying out that pot? And you know what? The thing about it is at 440 pounds, Vanessa had convinced herself that because she could get in and out of a car and drive around. <laughs> and she was still mobile. That she did not have to lose any weight. As a matter of fact, when she began to talk to Dr. Proctor at the end, at the last session, she said that Megan was able to lose the weight because she had somebody in her corner. Because she had the boyfriend. And Dr. Proctor said, I don't want to hear that. Because we got support groups here. We got over a thousand um, um, clients who will talk to you in a, in a moment's notice. All you got to do is pick up the phone and holler at your boy. He was not giving her any kind of excuse that she wanted to use in order to stay in the place that she was in. And at that point, she realized, okay, I got to change. But anyway, we're going back. So Megan, you know, now is starting to, is having, like I said, everybody's gathered together. They have their all their backs turned around. She's talking about, you know, how much her life has changed and all of that kind of stuff. And so then after she talks about that, you know, all her friends turn around. She's like, hello, everybody. And all of her friends turn around. And she has now lost weight and she's off the oxygen mask. While she's not off the oxygen mask all the time, she is using it less and less. She looks absolutely beautiful. Again, she's lost, I believe it was 180 pounds. And her goal is to get down to two under the, to 290 pounds. Megan is living her best life now. While there, she, you know, her boyfriend proposes to her in front of all of her family and friends. And she, of course she says, yes. And then one of her friends, I think it was her mother or her sister or somebody gave her the urn that her father's ashes was in. And in her fiance walked her over to a bench and she began to talk to her father and she began to cry. And she said, you know what, daddy, I promise you that I would do this. And so I am doing this. Um, you know, she was like, I, you know, I'm living a better life and I am absolutely, you know, on my way to keeping every promise that I made. And I know that you looking up, you know, you know, you looking low and that you are supporting me. Dr. Proctor is um, the is like a junior doctor now. 
and I am glad to see him have a spinoff show. Again, according to what I've read on several of the blog sites, this is going to be a new show on Discovery Plus. And remember that I brought Discovery Plus so that you don't have to. But he is um, a new doctor or has a new show on there. I believe they said that he's going to have seven episodes or seven people that he is going to try to help to lose weight. Again, thank you so much to Mary Grace, number five, my moderator, who hooked me up on the show. I absolutely loved it. And I wanted to come out here and talk about it with you all. So be on the lookout for this particular show. I'm excited about it. And I'm excited to bring you all the reviews week after week. Okay. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to everybody who super chat. I think it was just Tanya, right? Unless I missed something. But thank you so much, Tanya Lewis, for your super chat. I appreciate you. You're always so faithful to give. And um, your your nieces, I mean, your cousins will be grateful because those Super Chat money is always used to do something special for somebody. I love you all to pieces. And again, we'll be talking about this real soon. Love y'all.